Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for uh, your attendance today at our monthly LEPC meeting. Good to see everybody uh, today and continue to enjoy the improved weather that's coming about. Um, today, we're going to uh, have a presentation from the CERT group. Uh, you know, each month we try and come up with some topic that can help, uh, you know, in our, uh, you know, in our community, you know, preparedness. And um, certainly CERT is a very integral part of any type of community-wide, uh, uh, you know, emergency where resources are needed in, in, in vast uh, quantity when we're trying to, uh, you know, have uh, uh, different agencies or different groups uh, supporting us in order for us to concentrate on the emergency at hand. And uh, the CERT group um, previously with Dan's oversight and Helen has kind of, the torch has been passed a little bit to Mel, Henry, and Andy. And, um, you know, and Dr. Joe helps out quite a bit as well. And uh, with that, uh, we've had a lot of, um, a lot of activity with their group. They haven't necessarily been helping us out in the community because we've been very fortunate. However, they meet on a regular basis, which is, uh, you know, is a big accomplishment. Uh, in, in after after COVID and starting to get everybody back into, you know, uh, meeting with, you know, by group and um, and seeing that there's a little more participation and, and interest by um, by outsiders that uh, may want to. Uh, engage with uh, CERT. So they've been, you know, we, they utilize the training room here at night. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not going to, you know, uh, ruin their show, but they can explain, you know, a little bit about their mission, you know, the members that have been involved, their recent training, any future plans, and, you know, and hopefully they may be able to answer some questions about their activities. But, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge their hard work and their dedication and their involvement and, um, you know, we'll do whatever we can to support them as well. And I'll turn it over to whoever. You, Mel, do you want to start sure. first? So Mel Trot is, uh, as most people know, Mel is a retired lieutenant. He was our fire prevention officer up until a few years ago, and he's been very, very busy doing quite a few things. And there's also this connection with the uh, Falmouth uh, Amateur Radio Association, which they're also a part of, which is integral also in uh, emergency responses. So I just wanted to acknowledge you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, the, the chief mentioned, um, we kind of, your COVID hit, as everybody knows, a couple of years ago. And um, that, like everybody else, our meetings got curtailed, our trainings got curtailed. And I had only joined sir. Well, we'll see. I took the CERT class in 2019 in preparation that I, you know, I kind of, when I retired, I still want to kind of be involved in the community. So, um, but anyway, so uh, like I said, the, our training, our meetings got curtailed. And, and uh, but that being said, we, you know, we were still deployed. We, uh, it was 20, oh boy, yeah, a couple of years goes yeah. by quick. I guess it was 2021. We, we went out to the Cape Cod Fairgrounds uh, to help out with the with the vaccine clinics out there, and so uh, so you know it, it was a good time that people that we, we haven't seen in a while. We can talk and kibitz and network, and and so uh, Dan Donardo, we got talking with him, and he, he said, uh, you know, I, I bought a uh, I bought a camper. He says, and I want to and I want to go on vacation. He says, go do some traveling. I said, oh, good. He says, and so he says, I, I think you're a good person to take take over as the cert director. <laughs> and I went, what are you nuts? I says, I, 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 I've only been on the group a, a year. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So he's no, no, no. So you know, and of course, every time I saw him, he would he would harp on me. And so finally, some of us started talking, and uh, and there was a group of us that 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 really enjoyed you know what we do, and. Um, and so we decided to, to come together and create this management team that, that we currently have now. And so uh, one of the people is, is Andy, Andy Abbott, who uh, uh, has a lot of experience with CERT on the West Coast. Was it Washington State? Oregon. Oregon, okay. With Oregon, and they do some different things. CERT does different things out there than they do here, which is, which is good. So it, it, uh, 
and uh, he's also a certain instructor, which is which is helpful. And of course, Henry is the Henry Brown. Let's see if I can say this. He's the assistant district emergency coordinator for Aries, which is the which is Aries is the uh, emergency communications wing for the ham radio folks. And so Henry has a lot of knowledge with emergency communications and everything, which and which we'll talk about. And I think the chief had mentioned, you know, ham radio and CERT, we kind of fit naturally together. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and of course, you know, this, and I can't, I can't go any farther without mentioning Helen, because Helen also said she wanted to, to step back a little, but after some heavy negotiations with Helen, uh, she, um, so she, so she still, she stepped back a little. We took some of the responsibilities off that she didn't want, and uh, but she's kind of uh, our administrative assistant. Helen's an invaluable resource for me because she knows the history, she knows the people, she knows. Um, everything that has been done uh, previously. So um, I have Helen, and I have another administrative assistant too, which is Kim, and, and uh, she's also a valuable help. But anyways, so um, so what we started doing the the we we started meeting uh, you know, regular first but with by Zoom like everybody does, you know, if I had to do, and um, and then we started meeting in person. And so one of the things a couple. We, identified a couple of things. One of those, you know, we, we wanted to do some training, okay, and and we wanted to, what would it start look like once COVID, once we can stop meeting in person, once we kind of, hopefully, if we ever got back to normal, kind of rejuvenate it. And um, so, you know, one of the things that is people that, that have volunteers, which I'm sure you know, uh, I'm not telling you anything, is that you know, to keep people motivated, keep them involved, um, is you have regular meetings, and you have regular meetings, and you have regular training, and at those things, you want to make sure that the training is meaningful and educational and fun, and uh, and you want to make sure people feel like that they are important and they're valued, and 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 having that training and in those meetings um, builds community. So. Um, so we decided that uh, we were going to start having uh, some uh, regular trainings. We, so we set up a calendar and we've been meeting like every other month. And because we thought once a month might be a little bit too much, you know, for people. So every other month, and we try to have a, 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 a training session which lasts about an hour and something that's that's again valuable for them, valuable for the certainly for the community. Um, and so we've been doing some, uh, we've been meeting, like I said, every other month. And then on the opposite month, the, the management team, the three of us have been meeting and, and discussing ways that we can, uh, you know, what other trains we can do and some of the other things that uh, we can do for the program. So some of the, some, some of the trains that we've had um, over the past uh, couple of years is um, we've had, Andy gave a talk on, on uh, go kits. Um, Henry did a great talk on ham radio and emergency communications. Uh, we talked about one of the, the one of the certain modules is on fire and utility control. So we, we uh, had a, a, a um, talk on that. Uh, CPI first aid. We just did one a couple months ago on shelters because that's a that's one of our major responsibilities here in, in on the Cape for CERT is we help out with the shelters. And then we just had one uh, two, Tuesday night. Yeah, Tuesday night, we had uh, a talk on uh, opioid, opioid addiction and Narcan. And um, Doris Kramer from Learn to Cope came and talked about came and talked about that, which was which uh, I think a lot of people uh, felt was valuable. So, um, so the other thing that we want to do is <laughs> we notice is that a lot of our volunteers are are older people, um, and uh, and I and I'm 57, and I think I'm probably the youngest one on the team. Um, and and I think some of you people that have volunteer organizations know that you know a lot of the people are, are older people. Um, so we we decided you know we, we want to have a, a cert basic training class to see if we can get some some more people, some more volunteers. Uh, with COVID, some of the older people decided that they want to step back, which we totally get. And so. Uh, with the uh, help of the sheriff's department and Joe Gordon, uh, we we were able to put on a cert basic training class in Andy. I don't know if there was anything you want to mention about that. 
or you're great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how many, we had about, I think we had about maybe 10 or 12 yeah, ten, people? 10 made it all the way through the program from yeah. start to finish. Uh, and the, the national program has nine modules, uh, eight regular classes, and then a, a final exam and, uh, and exercise kind of thing. Um, and we were able to customize that down to uh, six modules. Uh, to process people through because a lot of the things, it's a national program uh, that's been around since it was started in 85. Um, and because it's a national program, it covers things on both coasts and the middle of the country. Um, and there's some things that don't apply to us. Like, when's the last time we had an earthquake here? Okay, if you're on the <laughs> West Coast, you know, there are earthquakes all the time and I, when I was out there for eight years, we spent a lot of time preparing for the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, where um, we were talking about if the whole thing let go at the same time, about 100 to 200 miles off the coast from Canada down to uh, the top of California, uh, some of the places along the coast could get a 140 foot wave of water coming in. And at Fukushima, you've all heard of that. The problems they had, that was a 40-foot wave. Uh, so that's big time worries, and it's about several hundred years behind schedule for the next one to occur. Uh, so we're not gonna have to worry about that. <laughs> and uh, we don't have to worry about uh, search and rescue because we have a very active professional community here. Um, and where I was in a rural, uh, County in Oregon, um, they needed all hands on deck, and we had to deal with more training for the kinds of things that they desperately needed help for. Whereas around here, we're, uh, we augment what's going on with the professionals, we don't take over for them. Um, and so, um, we've got another program hopefully coming up in the fall, and uh, we want to do that at least one every year to keep people coming into the system. Yeah. And so, yeah, and, you know, because I like we had said before, you know, one of the big things for us is, is the, uh, is, how, is staff in the shelters, you know, and, and we'll assist with traffic control at an at an incident. Um, and I know during the, during the training, we, and it's not part of the curriculum, the national curriculum, um, that we, we did a module on, uh, uh, Chip Riley came down from the county and did a module on, on shelters. Um, and, uh, and Henry did a talk on uh, emergency communications and, and ham radio. And, and like Andy said, the, the good thing, or the, the nice thing about CERT is this is a national model, national curriculum. So if you take a class here and you move to Florida, you, just, you, know, you can just have them, Florida people, get in touch with Joe and, and then you're good to go. You can, you can volunteer and become part of the CERT down at Wherever so, but um, but Henry, like I said, he, he did something on um, amateur radio, and and like I said before, you know it, uh, you know it really is. Uh, it, we noticed there was a lot of I forget how many people. We noticed there's a lot of people on CERT that are amateur radio <laughs> operators, and they really really you know they really fit together nicely. So. And Henry's done some stuff. He's got our communications. He's got some new radios uh, for us, and he's done some other things. So, um, Henry, if this something you want to? Yeah, I, what I am going to say is I'm not 57 years old. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'm Henry Brown, and I've been uh, a member of CERT since about 2012, and uh, took. Joe Gordon did the training down the Cape. Uh, I'm a native of the town here, and I, I, I joined up because I, I want to give back. So, so what I do is uh, take care of the communications, the radio communications. And you see that box over there. There's quite a few uh, pretty powerful radios in there that are used. They're amateur licensed type radios. And we plug them in over here, and we use them during the uh, a declared emergency. Uh, there's always a, a CERT operator, and usually it's Mel up here. They communicate with the shelter. We have a radio station down there. 
And uh, we also communicate with these radios to the MAC over in, I guess some of you must know where that is, it's at the old sheriff's, the old jail in Barnstable. That's where, uh, that's sort of a, 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 a uh, that's the important stuff for us, the shelter, the EOC, and the MAC. So we, we pass traffic back and forth during that last activation at the shelter. It was really helpful. We had, uh, we had some, some issues over there and uh, having communications up here to uh, the EOC was most useful. Um, it's difficult at the high school to get a phone signal out, a cell phone signal. It just, the building is just not inclined for that inside. And uh, so we, we use these radios there, and then inside the, the shelter we use these. We have 12 of these. These are uh, set up for uh, both amateur radio frequencies, fam family radio, FRS it's called. Uh, we, use, uh, we tend to use the MERS frequency, which is like a VHF uh, uh, citizens band type, type channel on these radios. And that's uh, how we communicate in the shelter, within the shelter. Uh, Kim was over there at the shelter uh, when we set up over there. She had a radio. Uh, the people in the front have radios. I, I would carry one around. Uh, so if anything, and if anybody's with any kind of medical, uh, people that require medical attention there, they have one. So we can communicate centrally within the high school with uh, radios like this. They're in their responder, which is at Station 5 in East Falmouth, and they're always charged. So we're always ready to ready to go with these. Um, so during a declared emergency, we're up here with uh, Mel's, Mel or another amateur radio operator from CERT would be up here. And um, I would be usually at the shelter. And I don't know if you know Frank O'Laughlin, you've heard his name, he's a meteorologist. He's the head of Cape Cod Amateur Radio Emergency uh, Service. And uh, he's usually at the MAC. And, He's, he's not, uh, Frank puts in his time, let me just put it that way, and he, he, he spent many hours at the MAC to the point where he's been just exhausted and uh, quite, a, quite a guy, put in a word for him. So that is uh, basically what we do. Um, we have, uh, the, the, the big thing is, if we had to do a search and rescue or anything like that, we have these portable radios, they're pretty effective. Uh, very expensive. This is a, a Chinese built radio. They're about $30 <coughs> a piece. The battery's about $10. And they will last days uh, transmitting. So uh, that's what we selected to use. Uh, they didn't cost very much and they're effective. So how can you ask for more? Uh, the big thing was setting up at the fairgrounds with the, um, with the vaccine clinics. We, uh, we use these all over the fairgrounds on low power, the low power setting, no problem communicating around the fairgrounds. So it was well worth the uh, effort to get them, which wasn't, wasn't that bad. Uh, that's about what we do. And uh, I, uh, next uh, couple of weeks, I'm going out to the National Amateur Radio Convention in Dayton, Ohio. I usually go every year. And out there, uh, uh, you get to meet other people who are involved in CERT and amateur radio, and some of the uh, some of the things that are done are much more extensive than what we do here, especially in the Midwest. Uh, you can imagine they've got so many tornado emergencies out there. It's a lot of a lot of people have a lot of communications auxiliary communications capability, and it works out. So, uh, anybody have any questions? Okay. Yeah, we had some um, we had some other radios in the responder and, and Henry. I've got some of these. I forgot where we get the money from. Yeah. But anyways, but we got it. We got it. <laughs> we, and so these these work a lot better. So that's so that's kind of you know how we landed here where we are today. Um, and currently, I, I checked just before I left, and this. We have like we have 75 names on our list of people, and not everybody, um, not everybody comes out. I would say we're probably a little under half, but you know, maybe 30 people. Would you think, Alan? I mean, is that a little too high? Okay, all right. 
But and people, you know, some people go to only certain events, and uh, some people are, are are snowbirds, and they're in Florida in the winter, so they're not here. So, but we do have, uh, you know, with some of the trainings, we'll have people maybe. Well, like the last one, I think there was 16 people that showed up. So that's, you know, and then you know we'll see some for some events and and others for other events. So, um, so. Some of the activities that we're involved in, uh, besides the training, um, Henry alluded to the. It, this is from 2022. Um, there was we had a winter storm at the end of January, um, and there was get deployed uh, to the shelter, and um, uh, and again that's one of the, the, the big responsibilities for us. We help out at the help out at the shelters, um, and the, like Henry said, the communications. Uh, because there was a problem with the phone system and, and basically the only communication out of the school was through amateur radio so um, so that's important uh, the other one of the other things we, we uh, Cape Cod cares for troops we, we help out with that and that's coming up in May uh, that's an event that's uh, out in Hyannis where they uh, it's, uh, collect uh, uh, supplies for the troops over overseas uh, so we, we help out with that. Um, another thing, it's not an official deployment, but we help out with the road race. And um, matter of fact, let's see, I had, there was 14 people from CERT that helped out the road race in various capacities. There's a group that does emergency communications and ham radio, and then there's another group of people that, that stand on the side of the road, or like Andy's at the finish line, <laughs> uh, you know, grabbing people and taking them to the, uh, Take them to the medical tent. So uh, we do that. Um, also, you remember in September of that year, um, we had the issue uh, where the migrants landed in Martha's Vineyard, and then they were subsequently taken to the base. Uh, so they, uh, so they, through through the, the county, we got called up, and, and uh, Andy went out there for that. Um, but we had some other people on standby that, um, if there was an issue, you know, they're going to be out there long term. That we had some people ready to go. Uh, to assist with that, um, we we uh, oh we assisted with the police department open house, <laughs> uh, uh, so that was uh, that was fun and uh, whatever they needed us to do, I think we served food and traffic and whatever it is. So we and uh, we've helped out with the, with fire departments open house before in the past too. Um, in November there was. Uh, a, uh, we had a shelter training walkthrough uh, in conjunction uh, was the uh, the county and the Red Cross. They're looking for volunteers uh, to staff the shelter. They're looking for volunteers like everybody else is, and so um, so we went up there and uh, took part in that. It was kind of a shelter walkthrough, and I got some information. Um, and I don't know how they made out with that, but uh, they're still certainly looking for that. The other thing that we uh, that we participated in was the the Falmouth Christmas Parade. So, um, so uh, we've been very lucky. I, I tell people that we've been very lucky yeah, up here in the Northeast. Uh, you know, we might have an occasional snowstorm, but you know, we haven't had any you know anything major as some of the other parts of the country um, do. So, but you know, but we want to make sure that we're we're ready to go. Um, so some of the other things, uh, this past winter, we, we uh, filed for a grant from uh, MEMA because we, we had this, we had this uh, uh, CERT class, CERT basic training class, and a lot of new people, and we wanted to make sure that they had some type of basic equipment. So um, we, we applied for a grant. We found out a couple weeks ago that we were awarded the money that we were looking for, which is just under $1,800. Uh, and we were able to purchase, uh, or Hopefully, when you know, we'll be able to purchase uh, vests, some hard hats, and some uh, everybody can get a backpack that they can uh, create their own go kit. Um, you know, we were thinking about getting some other equipment for it, but you know, people have different size hands, so they will probably want to get their own gloves, their own goggles, and, and that sort of thing. So, um, so, and also, uh, we want to purchase some uh, uh, some miscellaneous uh, first aid supplies, so we continue doing some first aid training. Uh, uh, for those uh, folks, because uh, that's always something that people are looking for is first aid and CPR training. So, 
um, and, and, and going forward, like, like Andy said, you know, we're, we're looking to, you know, try to do a basic cert class, you know, once a year, hopefully, to try to get more people involved as, as uh, some of the uh, population of volunteers uh, continues to, to get older. Uh, so we want to continue to do that and just really kind of build on what we started, you know, continue to do the training and, and be ready to serve the community when called upon. So, um, and in closing, I just want to thank the fire chief uh, because uh, in the support of the fire department because he's uh, uh, always supportive, whatever you need, whatever you, you know. Uh, and so I thank you. And then also I, for a huge help is Kim and she's my other administrative assistant because I can, I can call her up or just walk in and barge into her office and, and she's always there to help uh, with uh, anything that uh, I, I need help with, which is a lot. So, um, so that's, so that's kind of where we are with CERT and what we've been doing and what we hope to do. And I don't know if, hope I, nobody's, well, boy's sleeping, but other than that, <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, any, any questions, comments? Just a, a, a comment. In terms of the shelter, we can always use more people there. Hopefully, it won't open very often. Mm. But if it does, uh, and it could be long term, and you've been there, long lots term. of people. <laughs> long uh, so we could always use more pe more people there. And and at this point, in terms of shelter managers, uh, Kim and the three of us are the three shelter managers that are certified to be there and be responsible and hopefully when anything happens um, we'll have you know uh, others from the Red Cross and um, other groups mm -hmm. that are involved the dark group which takes care of the animals etc uh, so we'll be coordinating uh, entrance and exit and tallying people and all uh, but there'll be medical people there and a lot more people than just us we're just the kind of the point of the whole thing yeah uh, the other thing I should mention in training is that we would love to get people to come in, go through the training, you know, put on a vest and be part of our group, uh, but that's not our only function. Uh, we want people to come in and get the training so they know a little bit about a lot of different things in emergency management so they can get a go kit, they can have an emergency response for their house and work with their neighbors. That's the whole point of the community emergency response teams. Uh, so, you know, we don't act officially unless the chief has called us and said, we're deploying and this is what we need. Then we have liability and we're part of the whole. Uh, but we don't expect and we wouldn't expect any of you that were volunteers to come work with us if your own house isn't taken care of. So if the power goes out and you're not ready with that and you've got food and resources for several days and heavy blankets and whatever, um, then you can't really be part of the team. And so the more people that we run through this program, the more awareness they have of the things that can happen in this area and what they need to do to be prepared for. And it's different in each part of the country. Um, as Mel mentioned, uh, I spent I'm from Maine, but I spent eight years out in Oregon in a rural area, and you didn't leave your house without pretty much your emergency kit for 72 hours in your car, because there's a lot of place, there was a lot of nothing in between point A and point B, which is not the case around here. So we're less worried about outdoor survival, but a whole bunch of other things to make sure people have the med medications, phone numbers to call, you know, battery backup for the phones, you know, all of these kinds of things that people kind of are aware of, but it doesn't get drilled in that, you know, if the emergency happens tomorrow, that's too late. You gotta be really ahead of the game, so. Yeah, and, and Andy, you make a good point because, you know, and I know you mentioned it about where you were in Oregon, you put on classes and you know, and if people want to become part of the team, that was fine. If they didn't, that was fine too, because the information that, that is part of the CERT curriculum is just really good, basic uh, emergency preparedness information. It's, it's we, you know, we're not we're not taking the job of the fire service or the or the police department or anything. You know, we're, you know, we it's you know, one of the modules is about you know hazardous, 
you know, how to store hazardous materials in your house. <laughs> you know, everybody should, that's stuff, something for everybody there, you know. Uh, and, and even if, um, you know, you don't want to be part of the team or you can't be part of the team, if you go through uh, the training, I mean, maybe you can just be, be in your neighborhood. You know, that's, you know, however many houses are in your neighborhood, you can be pretty effective, um, you know, just, you know, hyper-locally, so. Um, all right. Kevin. Just from the police department's perspective, I just want to acknowledge and recognize all the work that your team does, Mel. Um, you guys have been, and, and, I, and, and Dan before you and everyone that we've worked with have been phenomenal in support of so many, so many things over the years that I'm mean, too numerous to even go into, but we recognize the value of the CERT team. We appreciate everything you do, all of you, uh, and uh, certainly anything we can do to assist you by way of our social media outlets or whatnot when you're doing your recruiting and your training and whatnot, mm -hmm. just reach out and we'll make sure we can we'll do what we can to help with that as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. See those flyers over there on the table? Do you have some we can put on our desk at the front uh, front Yeah, yeah, station? absolutely. Yeah, we can. We've got quite yeah. a few people that come in, so. Yeah, you know. okay, great. Yeah, we can do that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That being said, how do people reach you or your executive board to find out when the training is or, um, you know, to put their name in as a volunteer? Ah, good question. <laughs> well, I don't this page. There's, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, 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 should I should probably see because I haven't seen yeah, yeah, so that's it. There's a, the email there, Falmouth, and that's falmouthcert.ma. Yeah, so that's, there it is, falmouthcert.ma at gmail.com is, is the email. They can send an email to that. I, you know, all of us can get into that and we can look. Um, the classes are, are through the sheriff's office, and uh, Joe, I don't know it is, 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 if they go to the website, will they have information posted about training or? Yeah, on our website. Uh, you can navigate, it's kind of tricky, but you can find out my contact information and, and we work well together. I do want to say something real quickly because I work as a chair of the Cape Cod Citizen Corps Council and that's the umbrella organization for all the volunteer organizations active in disasters such as all the different CERT teams on the Cape, the amateur radio folks on the Cape, um, the Medical Reserve Corps, the Wampanoag Tribe, the Elder Services, they have a they have a contingent. And not only that, I've done I've worked with other volunteer agencies outside of emergency management. Um, and what I've seen is historically is when there's a transition from one leadership team to another, it's sometimes difficult to maintain and, and the organization will sometimes struggle with that change. But I didn't see that when it went from Dan and Helen to Mel, Henry, and Andy, be, not just because of the great people they all are, but because of this fire department's support. And Chief, I, I commend you and Kim for what you do. I see it also with the uh, Boxer team, that's the Brewster Orleans Chatham Howard's team, and the YD CERT team. They have great support by their fire departments and their police departments, and, that, and the same here in Falmouth too with their police. So uh, I commend this town, and I, I like, like Mel said, people should just come to the class just to get the basic preparedness uh, curriculum taught to them because it, it will help out when you're in the, your house and the power goes out for three days. There's little tips in, that you can utilize that will make that three days a lot more comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, you know, we, you know, like we had the, the medical uh, first aid portion of it. I said, I'm not training you to be EMTs or paramedics. It's just really basic first aid if you know, one of your kids or a family member gets cut. What do you do? <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Joe. So, um, yeah, so the, so on this is, uh, on the bottom of this paper is the email that they can, they can reach out to us if somebody's interested. Um, certainly they can contact the fire, the police department, or, yeah, so. All right. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, regarding you know information for cert, we certainly can get that on our social media sites. I know we can do it with the PD. We can do it with the fire department. We also have our emergency preparedness uh, page through the town, and I think that we can put something out and how whether we develop that you know a different 
you know, uh, fly arrow, we use that same flyer, which is, I think, is pretty extensive mm. with what's being offered and what services you guys assist with. But I wanted to echo what uh, Captain Reed had mentioned, which, you know, um, is, is the partnership that we have with our public agency partners in town, whether it's the police department, Harbor Master's Office of Communications, you know, we all work together and, and as Andy kind of, um, you know, alluded to is the fact that, you know, we have a professional group that are active in all of these agencies and, and we take things for granted because we do it on a daily basis. So the, you know, the, a lot of situations might be emergent to some, but they're just, you know, uh, uh, in the line of, you know, uh, of a regular duty day for us. And we're just, you know, we're just trying to go through, you know, um, you know, you know, responding to the incident, sizing up what's necessary for us to act and then try and mitigate the circumstances and get, get everybody back safely. And then, you know, the people that were helping it as well and get the essential services for them and return them back to the norm at some point. And then we go on to the next event. With CERT, um, we haven't had to activate them. The one time that I did pester Mel, it was early in the morning. We had an elderly gentleman that had been gone, that had, had uh, gone missing, and I knew that based on some of the conversations, we had already activated, um, you know, the, our county uh, search group or the tech team. The police were already there, and I knew that uh, you know this was a good opportunity to you know to get a wider you know, a net out there with more personnel, and you know, I woke Mel up, which was fine, because I've done that to him before. <laughs> so, you know, but he answered the phone right away, and we started to mobilize their assistance, um, but thankfully, you know, it was, uh, we found the gentleman sitting in somebody's garage, and, um, you know, and everything, uh, you know, came to a successful conclusion. But, again, you know, the local groups like this, the, the same, the same individuals that are involved with CERT also help with the ham radio side of things, but they, they also help with doing CPR. It's all community-based. And we're very fortunate here, and, and I appreciate, you know, Joe pointing out our support, but it goes hand in hand. And um, I'm very fortunate that I have a lot of staff and a lot of personnel and, and you know, people that have been coming and going in the building for a long time, and we network very well together. and we're, and so. You know, whatever we can do to support them, whether it's just offering up our room uh, for all these groups every single month, or if they need something, we house the, their responder. We we donated the responder. It's one of our older ambulances that um, you know that we take care of, and and they will you know it's theirs. They utilize it for their purposes, and we've helped to establish what's needed in there. Should they need to go to a scene, and then they can support their own. Uh, group and they take that vehicle with them. Um, I know Andy wanted to come racing up here today, but he got the kibosh <laughs> on that, so I couldn't bring it here. Um, can't fit it in this room. Um, but uh, you know, we welcome you know the the assistance from these groups, and you know, and I guess the the good thing is we don't need their services all the time. And I know sometimes you know the volunteers are very eager after they get all this training, they want something to happen and. You know, I would just say be patient because we we're very fortunate. This this past winter it was fairly mild, but we're coming up on hurricane season, and um, and road race and Fourth of July and any other event that can just pop up, that um, outside of planned events, you know, natural or man-made incidences, and we're going to need all hands to help us get through it because it is community-based and um, what makes it even more unique. Other than Oregon, unless you had a 140-foot wave come crashing through, is we only have two bridges coming to the to this area, and so if we ever were to lose, you know, access to the Cape and Cape and Islands, it's it's just us. So um, so I see I see the 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 interest with the uh, with the groups. I see the work that they do. I see how positive they are when they come here, and um, you know, and I pop in it whenever I can to tease everybody while they're here because, uh, you know, they, you know cause that's what I do. But uh, they're all here all the time in, in working and in, in they have everything planned out and it's a very productive um, citizen group and I really, you know, my, my, my hat's off to them for doing everything that they do to help us out. So, um, 
So we do look forward to, you know, to, to their ongoing uh, collaboration with us. I hope that uh, a listening, listening audience will um, take heed. Maybe they know somebody that's interested and, and wishes to, uh, to volunteer and to be part of the group, uh, even if it's uh, a couple of people that are, that are reached as a result of our uh, broadcast through FCTV. It, it's, it's two to three more than they have right now. So I would say that it, it's a worthwhile opportunity. I, from personal experience, my brother retired from New England. He went down to Florida. He's involved with the, the CERT team in one of the counties down there. And he's been very active. And any time he gets deployed, he calls up because he can't believe that they're actually doing things. But they train all the time. And he actually was recently deployed because they were helping the police department look for a weapon. Hmm. So they had all of their CERT team, and, and they had about 20 members that were out, you know, helping the local police department. So um, they, they, they heed the call, and they go out there and they help because that's what they volunteered to do. Um, so that being said, an anything else that we can, uh, you know, direct question-wise towards uh, our CERT personnel? Any, any other questions or input from anybody? more than happy to hear anything. Yes? I just want to remind people that um, when there are power outages in town, the library serves as a warning station. We're not a shelter, but we get a lot of people that come in to charge their devices and have a place to stay and be entertained. Um, we're lucky that we're on that main line that receives its power back pretty quick, but yes. we would love to have a generator. We've looked into it, but we're mm -hmm. a big building. It would be quite expensive. Yes, and, and that's a great point, and thank you, because, um, you know, you know we've, we've talked about this in the past, that, uh, you know, planning for the town, when, when we work with Eversource, they look at critical infrastructure, and we try, they try and address power issues in town to try and get the critical infrastructure, um, you know, uh, supported sooner than, than the rest of the citizens in town. Um, I know people don't like to hear that, but we do need to get you know, our fire department, police department, the rec center, the high school, uh, town, town administration, we try and get them going for essential services to keep everybody, um, you know, afloat. And we do offer the warming stations through the town administrator helps to work, you know, the town manager helps to work to, um, to identify where we're going to have that. We try and make notification through our social media out outlets. Um, we get the, the other information. Um, through other sources and generally sometimes we stand up the rec center more for um, for uh, warming stations uh, and then the library is also one town hall is another um, obviously police and fire are kind of there's a little more security involved with that we can't uh, host anybody in, in our buildings but um, and plus we have our EOC um, that's stood up during a big emergency if there's warming stations you can probably bet that we're involved over here as well so um so we are fortunate that we have some of these facilities that we can as long you know can stand up as long as in your instance your you know the, the power is still going to the building but um we do have other um you know other resources the the sheltering side of it that's always something that's um that uh we we hope to be seamless when we do have to stand one up but that's done on a community uh, on a countywide discussion whereas we have our local emergency planning committees we work in conjunction with the Barnesville um, uh, you know planning committee to look at it on a countywide basis and we look at all the regional areas that we might need to use as shelters so Falmouth being one of them Sandwich is another one and then Hyannis and, and so forth but as we go down the Cape and Falmouth has a very good location at the high school but again a lot of people have to remember that um, you know, where when we do make that decision, it's based on the fact that there's not going to be any school. When you know, and naturally, if there's a big disaster going on or a big incident, the school's not going to be run up. But we also have to think about the you know, 24 hours before and 24 hours after to to stand them down. But but volunteerism has been kind of you know, lackadaisical in, in the past because of COVID, and, and it was very difficult. And the Red Cross is is big part of that. But CERT members have stood up, along with Kim and others, and they've gone there and they've been able to, um, to man the shelters when we couldn't get our partners that need to be in there, namely the Red Cross. But 
Um, the communications on all of these facets keep going on, and we're hopeful that you know we, we talk enough about it that um, when the time comes, it's you know the communications is there to to get these things activated, and and then we can provide something again for our citizens. Fortunate. Fortunately, we've had you know a lot of our incidences that we've had. Most of our citizens don't ne necessarily want to go to the shelters, but when they do, we're 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 fortunate that we have a great setup there to host and house anybody that may need it. Um, so uh, you know, again, Falmouth has has something that other communities don't, and I think that you know, listening to other 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 partners, chiefs. Across the region, I you know Falmouth is 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 very well regarded for the professional services and and um, what's, uh, what the community offers when there's a crisis or a disaster. So hats off to everybody. So, so we'll get the information out for the for about the cert, and if anybody's interested, we would welcome that. You know, on behalf of cert, um, and we'll continue to support them. And if there's anything that is that can think of please you know send email to us speak to Kim Kim again she's jack of all trades in the office there uh, we'll look forward to next month and uh, we'll see what we can do and uh, with our next LEPC but I want to thank CERT for stepping up to you know bring to bring a valuable you know presentation to everybody so thank you so that being said, thanks again for attending this month's LEPC, and have a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you.